if I can, uh, if I can have everyone's attention, please. Um, well, I just wanted to take one last time to say thank you to all of you for your hard work as part of the Flint Tropics. And to my teammates, it was an honor to be on the court with you. You guys are the best. And even you, Vakitis, you goddamn dumb son of a bitch. You don't understand a word I'm saying, do you? <clears throat> to the Tropic Ball girls, I I always thought I was going to uh, sleep with a couple of you, but uh, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> that didn't happen. Um, <laughs> te- teach me to procrastinate. <laughs> uh gaby seeks gaby seeks uh you're you're like the son i never had the the son who's exactly one year and 20 days younger than me uh well gabe you're like the the half son half half friend friend i uh uh, like a son friend uh Uh, nope don't talk you'll just make it worse i don't i don't want to cry and wet my pants uh i um i'm not making a whole lot of sense right now uh uh, okay, uh, can I say a few uh, words? Please. Please. Uh, 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 <laughs> Gentlemen, you can't fight in here. This is the war room. You can't handle the truth. King Kong ain't got shit on me. I am the I am so much crazier. I am the one who knocks. Go ahead. Make my day. Welcome to the ball game here. We got a great episode for you, and uh, I am one of your hosts. I am Gabe, and this is my color commentator. My name is Nick, and welcome to the ball game. Today we have a great game for you ahead of us. Yeah, we got Stevenson up on the mound you, right you now. Know, a- you know, funny story about Stevenson, Gabe. Yeah. Stevenson was studying to be a priest at a Montessori. I think you mean monastery there, Nick. Well, you're probably right. I am not very good at this. Yeah, the pitch is going through. Yeah, welcome to Facing Off. This is a podcast where we take two movies that we find to be similar in some way, and we compare, contrast, and rate them. Nick, what is up, my good dude? Hey, man. How, you How are your uh, How's your social distancing going? Uh, I've been distancing really hard, except for I've been stuck with you, my good friend. <laughs> We've been distanced from everyone but ourselves and our significant others. Yeah. And uh, Alec. Your roommate slash friend. That's true. I didn't, by choice, distance my significant other, but I said, well, no, no you haven't distanced yeah, from yeah. your significant other, because no. how could you? I couldn't. I couldn't. How could uh, you? Nick, you staying healthy? You doing yeah, good, man. Dude? I'm good. Cool. Well, uh, we're doing like, <laughs> great. Everything's uh, fine. It's good. Well, it's hey, fine. everybody, it's fine. while it's fine. you are inside and staying safe and not able to watch sports... We wanted to give you a special episode about sports movies just so we can feed your addiction. We are your sports. Yeah. We are, we are, we are. <laughs> the sports of the day. I don't know what I'm saying. Nick, I don't have any shout outs <laughs> since this is a special episode. Hey, shout out to everybody helping out in this country. Seriously. Yeah. Shout out if you work in a hospital. Shout out to everyone that is going to work right now or because you have to. Yeah, or your doctor, or you work in a restaurant or a mm-hmm. supermarket. I mean, jeez. Yeah. yeah, thank you to everyone. If you in work the in a supermarket, you're basically a saint right now. Basically. Yeah. I wouldn't say otherwise. Nick, uh, we're going to do two uh, sports movies that are fairly popular. We're doing Semi Pro versus uh, Major, Major League. League. And yeah. so why don't you hit us with the synopses of each of these in case anyone out there hasn't seen these movies. Yeah, absolutely. So we chose Semi-Pro versus Major League because there are no sports right now, and we were feeling a craving, and we filled that craving with movies. Mm-hmm. Semi-Pro and Major League are both movies about um, underachieving teams that achieve to a higher degree than others expect them to. You might call them underdogs. Whoa. Woof. Woof. Semi-Pro is the story of Jackie Moon, a singer turned basketball player, turned owner, turned manager, turned basketball coach, turned promoter. Moon is the star power forward, the owner and the manager of the American Basketball Association's Flint 
tropics. Mm. When Jackie attends a meeting about the pending NBA-ABA merger, he learns his tropics will be disbanded at the end of the season. He's upset, and he lobbies to compete for the right to be in the NBA. The ABA Council agrees. The Tropics, with former NBA champ Monix as the point guard and coach, go on a winning streak for the ages. Moon fights a bear and gets his fans in the seats as the Tropics climb the standings and put butts in the seats. Alas, the team chemistry crumbles. The ABA decides to disband the Tropics regardless of their success, and the team trades star Coffee Black to the Spurs. In their final game against those Spurs, the team comes together one last time to take home the W as Black returns to the team. He and Moon invent the alley-oop with an assist from Moon's dead mom and bring the Flint Tropics one last glorious semi-professional moment. Wow. Yeah. Titular. Uh, Major League is the story. mostly. Yeah, mostly. Uh, Kind of. Uh, Major League sort of. is the story, sort of, is the story of Jake Taylor, Rick Vaughn, Roger Dorn, Pedro Serrano, Willie Mays, Hayes, and the Cleveland Indians rise from nobodies to division champs. In mm-hmm. spite of their spiteful owner, who devises a way to lead her terrible team to last place and relocate from Cleveland to Miami, the Indians rally. The Indians? The Indians rally. Yeah. Taylor gets the girl. Vaughn learns to see and to throw strikes. Serrano learns to hit the curve. Dorn learns to field and also presumably has his marriage crumple. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's not talked about. And Hayes steals 100 as the but Indians. He's okay with it, I think. Yeah, I think so. As the Indians take the division series in a legitimately engaging final tiebreaker against those dastardly Yankees. Oh, you dastardly Yankees. Boo! Boom. Those are our two uh, cool. movies. Yeah, no, good synopsis, Sports. man. Yeah, Nick and I have been hanging out all day watching these movies, and I think they would be pretty fun because they're kind of about uh, nothings turning into somethings. And uh, I yep. guess that's the best through line for these two movies. Well, let's rate let's them. Let's talk about our ratings. Well, let's put them <laughs> through the ratings. We have uh, a rating scale 1 to 7. 1 is the worst, 4 is the middle, 7 is the World Series champion. Yep, and we are going to do our comedy categories with a little bit of a twist on this one. We are going to start with Spectac Hilarity, and then we're going to do a... Uh, what are we? What's our new category? Sportality. Called? Sportality. And uh, yeah, yeah, we'll explain that in a little bit. And then we'll do Actoring legacy and then quotability slash rewatchability nick hit us with spectac I, hilarity semi-pro nice i always say uh who's batting lead off and i'm this is actually an appropriate time to say that yeah you this can is bat our, lead off here dude. this is our first sports movie yeah. and i will bat lead off yeah which one am i starting first from? The i wasn't at. listening to you let's do uh semi-pro spectac hilarity <laughs> Spectac hilarity, uh, just to reiterate, is when we talk about yeah. the engagement level of the movie, whether you were really engaged with it, um, and then the hilarity aspect being the comedy. It's laughs um, per minute. Exactly. Was it well balanced with its comedy? Were you engaged in terms of your life? Okay, this is a funny way to lead off. I'm going to lead off with a ground ball to the second baseman. Um, semi-pro, I give a three. Because honestly, I don't think it has too many like belly laugh scenes. It's a Will Ferrell movie, so there's like, there's definitely some times that are funny, yeah. but it's because it's written in a way where there's just absurd lines, like, I mean, like, uh, let's see, like, <laughs> you could say like when they say boner want. machine, oh, yeah, and yeah. the whole jive turkey thing, and I'm the let's get tropical, and there's just like funny things that are inserted. But there aren't many scenes that are cleverly written and actually laughable. And it's totally so agree. disappointing that the puke scenes don't include actual puke. Because I am a sucker for puke scenes in movies, and I think they are so funny. It's way funnier when you can actually see the puke. And it's so, and it's just not done in this movie. There's yeah. this excellent lead up, and then it's like, cut, yep. done. Nobody actually pukes. Show me the Vomit. Show me the pukey. Um, um, however, yeah, there are a few. Vomit. There are three scenes I want to point out. The alley oop scene is f- super funny. The poker scene yep. is hilarious, mm-hmm. and the cuckold scene. Is, oh, with Rob Corddry as Kyle when he's is, just like sitting uh, there. A, he's like, no, no, no. You guys, you guys keep doing this. <laughs> that scene is a standout. Oh, that is great. Yeah, 
What I don't know. You? I'm. I think I'm gonna be a three as well out of seven. Um, so slightly below average. Uh, I definitely laughed throughout, and I'm really engaged because of the actors in it. I mean, it has like a crazy amount of actors in it that we'll talk about yeah. in actoring. But out of all the comedies I rewatch, I'm not as engaged. Um, no, especially out of Will Ferrell comedies. I will say that it ropes you in early on with the love me sexy, like opening with Will Ferrell singing love me sexy, because it is just like a hilarious song. And it's kind of like a cool history of what's happening with the team. Um, as you said, the can't puke scene is really funny. Everyone always talks about that. And it's mostly ridiculous because right before it, they're wearing like mascot costumes. Um, and that's a pretty funny scene. Yeah. Uh, the loaded gun, as you were talking about, the like not loaded gun scene where yeah, they're the all like, scene. yeah, when they're all like pointing it at each other <laughs> and he's like, oh, you're like James Bond. He's like, James Bond, shaken, not stirred, stirred in half a carafe or something like <laughs> yeah, that. Stirred it's, in a half carafe. Yeah, it's so funny. Um, I think it could have been like way funnier than it was. And I think it's like a big waste of talent. Um, I don't it's think, just, like, I think it's, like, kind of about the writing and the structuring by the director um, that doesn't make it that funny. Uh, the movie also wastes a lot of time extending scenes that aren't naturally funny. Yeah, Like, that's, a big scene is, like, yeah. the corn dog scene. I didn't think it was that funny in that last, like, 10 to 15 minutes. When that they're is, like... like but if they score 125 points, right. then everyone gets free corn dogs. And that, like that's like the hallmark of a not good comedy to me is when the the amount of time that you spend on certain scenes is not allocated correctly. Totally. Totally. Like like this movie starts off way too fast and then focuses and spends way too much on scenes that aren't good with the exception of the the poker Russian roulette scene, the bear scene, when the he's bear fighting scene, the bear is super and funny. the cuckold scene. Yeah, I mean, I I totally agree. <laughs> and it, and honestly, and they throw in like montages. Like, there's a montage of them winning. Yeah, like it's a sports throw movie. in something funny in that. It has to have montage. It's got to be slapstick. It's just, uh, slapstick. Yeah. Um, and the music score honestly takes me out. Like, I I was disengaged by how stupid the score was, and that's something I would normally not notice in a dumb comedy. I think it's just yeah. the uh, yeah, it wasn't great. Three out of three out of seven from uh, both Nick and myself. Two threes. Well, let's talk about Major League though. Spectacularity. Okay, I'm really curious to hear what you gave this in spe- spectacularity. In in terms of spectacularity, I gave it a four out of seven, oh. like average. I kind of wanted to give it higher. I don't think it's super funny as a movie. Right. I just found it to be pretty engaging, especially in the story. Um, The story's never really chaotic. Um, It's never really boring. Um, There's a lot of visual laughs that help. So we're not doing eye candy today, which is where we talk about the visual elements of the movie. But I think there's a lot of good, like, visual laughs. Like, every every single thing with Wesley Snipes as uh, Willie Mays Hayes is really funny, especially when he's first in the batter's box. Um, all the yeah, all Charlie his, Sheen all his, outfits. All of his like, little... Um, yeah, like, the shimmies in the box and stuff. His like, like, his, like, superstitions that he does where he, he like, dances and shakes his yeah, hips exactly. in the batter's box. Yeah, So funny. And then Charlie Sheen, when he goes out to dinner and he's like, oh, I had to put on my suit or whatever, and he's wearing, like, <laughs> he says, a tie he says, over... Like, a, he, says, a, he says, I feel like a banker. And he's wearing like a tie over a mesh uh, <laughs> a wife beater, and then and, and uh, like a and a like a green leather vest. Right. And yeah. And like, the, I feel like a banker. And, like, and that, <laughs> dude, that part is so funny. Um, all the visual parts are really funny. We were laughing super hard at uh, Euchler as uh, Euchre. Uh, Bob Euchre. Euchre, Euchre as uh, Luke. Um, what what is it? Harry Doyle. Every single scene with him announcing the games, we were laughing our ass off. Amazing. Euchre the crappy is a airline stuff was really funny where they're like taping the wing. Yeah. And they're like in the shittiest situation. It has a lot of physical comedy and it's it's pretty awesome. I do think it could have been more slapstick funny. Like Definitely. it is a goofy movie, but it almost felt serious in like half of it. Yeah, it does tend to take itself like maybe more seriously than it should. It's not consistently funny, but it's consistently entertaining. Mm-hmm. Um, the notable exception I wrote down is everything that involves Jake Taylor and whatever the actress Russo. What's her oh, first Renee name? Renee Russo. Renee yeah. Russo. 
all the scenes involving them, I just don't care about the love. Yeah, I don't know why yeah. there's this random romance. Part yeah, I'm just in not it. into it. There's yeah, also some corny totally scenes, agree. like when Jake Taylor, um, who's the like main character of the movie, is the catcher with bad knees that is like a vet, but the team picks him up as like their leader. Yeah. Um, he ends up batting second, so he must have had a good season. I guess they Especially said that for he was like zero for twelve against that last pitcher. Yeah. But that last pitcher was set up as the like best closer the best in, the in the league. But yeah, anyways, yeah. Um, he sucked. There's a scene where he calls his shot early in the movie, and he's like by himself in their like home park in Cleveland, uh-huh. and it's so corny. Yeah, no, that's that's kind of <laughs> what it so is, and it's corny. like disengaging. I also like Nick pointed this out. We stopped like halfway through. Um, just talk about the movie and stuff. And actually, I don't know what we were doing. Maybe you went to the bathroom or something. Yeah, I went to the bathroom. And then we like poured some water or something. But we talked about like this movie is too long for what it is. As a comedy, comedies should be like an hour and twenty minutes. Or if it's a super engaging comedy, it yeah. could be like an hour and. 50. That's the thing is it. It's not like really. It's not really a a comedy only. No, it's, it's also more of a like movie, this. Yeah. This yeah, this like kind of sports epic and so i wrote down the replacement the last quarter or so of major league is like a six yeah and spectacularity yeah if we were not doing the like laughs per minute thing the the last scene like i said in my synopsis where they play the yankees in the tiebreaker to determine who's going to be the division winner is legitimately really entertaining right also it ends on a crazy play that he that taylor bunts and the guy scores from second base Honestly, that's actually a pretty good segue. But what did you give it overall for Spectacularity? Also a four. Okay. Yeah. So that's a four from Nick and I for Spectacularity. I think that's a good transition that you should talk about our next uh, our next category, which we call uh, Sportality. Sportality. And yeah. Sportality, we replaced originality it. because it's hard to really say that a movie about sports is original. For sure. Um, yeah. Well, it needs to be know. like accurate to the sports, we and then it needs ca- to be accurate. Like, did this sports movie need to be made, and does it stand out in the genre of sports movies? Right, anyway. exactly. We needed a category for our movies where we compare to that involve sports, and this one is really just: Are we thinking about how accurate these movies are to what the sport? How these people would play the? Yeah, because it's sport? kind of distracting when they when they're not playing exactly. It right. Yeah, yeah. If, if you watch sports and you've played sports and the the movie is about sports and it, they just don't look like they can be actual athletes, it's a little. It takes you out of it a bit. For sure. Um, are we starting with Major League? Yeah, let's start with Major League. Okay, that's good because I believe everyone in Major League in the movie could actually play. They kind of pull it off. There are some swings Dude, that they so take. it's so believable. That there are some swings that kind of take me out of it. But then again, we were looking at that picture of Jamie, uh, Jamie, Jimmy Fox. Oh my God. So there was a player a named Hall of Jimmy Fame. Fox. Yeah, he's a Hall of Fame. He's one of the best, player of all, best players of all time. And the I mean, most absurd baseball card I've ever seen. It, definitely look it up. Guys if you used have to any, take swings. If you have two seconds. Don't look like real swings. Um, it looks like he's like skipping and crossing his legs <laughs> and stuff. I don't know. And man. there are some scenes where Jake Taylor looks the same, but everything else is pretty spot on. Yeah. Um, the way the team is created makes sense that Hayes is the leadoff hitter and he's fast and Taylor's the leader and he bats second because maybe he's good at getting on base and he's crafty. I don't think that a team like that could actually win a division, but that's kind of the point. Yeah. Like it's an underdog story. And I do believe that um I like the 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 story's believable. It has like elements of like a uh a, a like bootstraps type of team that could actually win. There's like the veteran starting pitcher, the the like upstart center fielder who's super fast, the veteran yep. catcher, the the yeah, he's two highly paid corner infielder right. Dorn, um, who's like a vet that is too full of himself. Like I, I totally yeah. Can, it like, was like a believable. I can draw team, parallels sure. to like actual players that I know, and yeah. I, I totally believe what's you happening in major league. So I gave it a six. Yes, that I know personally. Cool. You gave it a six. I gave it a six as well. Actually, out of seven. Um, I really think that that's good. That what, what players do you know? I, 
I knew one guy that almost played. Um, yeah, but he doesn't Cool story, anymore. bro. Uh, I agree with you. I think like all the sports stuff is super believable. Um, I would say the only thing that bothers me that doesn't feel realistic to like sports is, uh, and I was bringing this up while we were watching, was um, how the fan base like grew in Cleveland. Because they show the like, there's like five diehard fans or whatever, and it slowly grows over the season. And then, bam, it's like the game that decides whether they go to the playoffs, like if they but win I their think division. That makes sense. And, and there's like a million people in there. Like, imagine if the, like, like the, the Miami Marlins this year pulled something like this off. They'd start with 5,000 fans at the, the no, park. No, I told you. Okay, up there's a difference 60, between 5,000 and like, 20 fans and then all and then like a hundred fans and then a full all right, stadium all right. and it's just in that scene i'm just saying one nitpicky thing because i do i really do think it's very believable um i think the the, esta- the opening really establishes the story and yeah, who the cleveland, uh, cleveland indians are and why it's so important that they you know come from nothing to something totally um, the streak that they're talking about is still going on in cleveland yeah oh yeah yeah well, yeah, I wish that they won, but um, <laughs> the, the one thing I, I I was thinking about is that like whether this movie needed to be made, and I think it absolutely does. But I do think there are a lot of movies out there about a crappy team, you know, defying the odds and coming up and like working together to do that. Yeah, and I don't know if they've all come from Major League or from something else because you know Bad News Bears was before that, but that was with kids. Um, yeah. I don't know, but I think it's probably one of the better sports movies. I think it's really funny. Yeah, it's one so of the best baseball movies right. for sure. It's like inspiring, but it's also really funny. So yeah, it's pretty accurate. I give it a six out of seven. I don't think it's the most original, but I think it's pretty damn original. Yeah. What about Semi Pro, Nick? <laughs> oh, dude, I gave it a two. Yeah, oh, oh, shit. That's right, Semi Pro. I just can't believe a lot of the things that happen in Semi Pro from a like a basketball sense like will ferrell is the power forward and i get it i don't know what year the movie is set in love but I, love me sexy <laughs> you just want to sing that song for a while yeah let's just do that for the rest interlude of the yeah. intermission here uh yeah. i just like i mean can you believe that will ferrell is no. the starting power forward for well, a, i mean even the story is like team? he was a singer or something beforehand and they bought the team and then he's the power forward and then which he is funny a, it's absurd and he's Pretty. T- I mean, if he's six five in the movie, that's pretty tall, especially for a power forward right. in like the '60s or whatever this is. But right. I, I, I get that it's. I like that it's referential of the NBA ABA merger. I don't know how accurate it is, but they definitely reference the teams. Definitely, that, I put that note too. That merged into the NBA, like the Nets and the Spurs, Spurs and the yeah, Nets and the Nuggets. Mm. Um, but I just like don't believe a lot of what's happening. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's really fair because I don't know if it was supposed to be a realistic movie. But I also d- think, like, in terms of sports comedies, like, I don't think it's, like, that necessary of a movie to no, watch. No, it also does not need to be made. It definitely didn't need to be made. No. And if you're looking at, like, Will Ferrell is, you know, one of our favorite comedic actors. We love all of his movies. And he's still great in this, which we'll talk about in a second. But, like... I don't know if this needed to exist in his catalog. If anything, it brings it down, and it kind of showed us what his late career would be like, mm-hmm. which it's kind of felt like lately. Where he just makes some serious mistakes. Yeah. Uh, I also just feel like there's no structure to the movie. So, like, no. writing in an original context, there's nothing... You know, like, everything is really funny, but it's kind of a lot of nonsense early on is with it? a lot of jokes. Like, I, No, I mean, I, like, I was laughing at it, and I think it's, like, funny on paper, or in sometimes in some of the performances, but I'm like, yeah. sometimes I was like, what? What is this movie about? Like, why should I care about it? Why should I be it's about a bunch of jive turkeys, dude? Yeah, I, I don't know. I gave it a two. Nick gave it a two. The one thing that's not well, a, it we might make agree it, completely. Yeah, on this are we just episode. matching, dude? Yeah. Are we synced up right hey, now, dude? Have we been social distancing so hard that we are now socially? One, we've been socially distancing, (laughs) so now now we are socially fused. Um, the one thing that makes it not a one and a two for me is that Woody Harrelson seems like he could actually like ball. 
Oh you know? yeah, dude. It this and hey, Woody, uh, friends with benefits there, and white men can jump. Woody, um, can you ball, bro? Yeah, Woody, Woody, just, just come wondering. see us on the court, brah. Just curious. Uh, all, right. all right, well, let's move on to our next category: <laughs> actoring. Actoring is where we talk about uh, the performances and whether the actors were super funny in their role and believably funny, and then whether the writers and directors, you know, helped them out in that way and made it into a funny movie and with their performances. Yeah. All right, you bat lead off this time. All right, lead off. Let's go with semi pro since we're talking about it already. I'm still gonna give this one a five. You know, I've been kind of shitting on semi-pro. I do think okay. it's really funny. I mean, there are so many actors in this movie, and I forgot all about them. Like, you'll have all these lead actors and stuff, and then randomly, before their careers had blossomed, you have, like, Kristen Wiig. Uh, yeah, Jason Sudeikis is in one. a scene. Um, there was another one I wrote down that, like, randomly pop, uh, pops up. Uh, Ed Helms. Is like, but he's like a serious actor in it. Um, Aaron, I, I want to talk about uh, about this. So Aaron was one of our past uh, guests. He Aaron was on, Harrington. Yeah, Aaron Harrington. Uh, he was on the Step Brothers versus Holmes and Watson at, uh, episode, and Aaron said in that episode that Semi Pro was one of his favorite Will Ferrell movies. And I, I couldn't disagree. Did we more. go back and verify that he said that? Yeah, actually, Aaron might not have said that, but he might have done it as an honorable mention. But here's the thing: put, it's not. You did not. Will Ferrell is definitely really. Yeah, I know. I should have <laughs> gone through this. Um, Will Ferrell is really funny, but I don't like. Of course, he brings up every scene. That's who Will Ferrell is. He's one of the funniest people in the world. Interesting. Okay. Um, but. I don't know. This just isn't comparable to any of his good movies. And I think it's funny that he's really crass in this, but it's not like the best of him. And Woody Harrelson is like, is pretty cool in the movie. Honestly, like he's like a good semi-confident, like washed up dude. Um, he's really believable in his sports scenes. Uh, dude, but this movie is brought up completely. And the reason why it's not a four is, it's it's Will Arnett and Andrew Daly as oh, Redwood man. or whatever and Dick Pepperwood. They are so funny in this movie and their commentary is incredible in each of the scenes. Um, Andrew Daly is so great. Like I feel like he this is early on him perfecting his craft as this like fake anchor slash commentator, oh, which my is God. like you know he was in the show Review that you love. I um, love that show, dude. Tim Meadows is also one of my favorite actors. He's he's only in one scene, but he's super funny in it. Um, it's what a lot a of like great actors. I would say there's like Andre 3000 is okay. I think they could have picked someone funnier. He always kind role. of because he's such a familiar sounding voice. Having listened to Outcast, yeah, you only think it. It kind of always sounds like he's about to start rapping, right? And it's kind of a bummer. Although I love his, I love Andre 3000. I, I like know. the guy who plays Twiggy. And I, the only thing I yeah. recognize him from, because he has that one line where he's like, how are your mom and sister? Been 12 months since I porked them or whatever. Uh, he, the only thing I remember him from is in New Girl, he's Bear Claw's best friend. Oh, really? The one who's like hitting on uh, Jess. See, I don't think that anyone in either of these movies is a standout, honestly. Mm, okay. I don't even think Will Ferrell is that great. In this. Yeah. It's kind of sad. I don't know. I still thought he was pretty funny in certain scenes. I, it, there's something about his face that makes me laugh every time I see him. My standout is Rob Cordry. Yeah, Rob Cordry is amazing. And Rob Cordry in Semi Pro is. <laughs> As Kyle. What's up, Kyle? He is like a standout, hilarious actor. He does the best that he can with what he's given. Um, and he's hilarious in this movie. Yeah. Uh, Woody Harrelson also deserves a shout out because I'm pretty sure he could ball. Dude, Woody Harrelson, you ball until you and see us on the court. He's great. He's pretty much good in everything. Oh, you know His what? His delivery I've... is always on, no matter if the line is the dumbest piece of dirt ever put in front of him or like yeah, Shakespeare. Yeah, I mean, the dude is Doesn't so matter. versatile. Yeah. Um, you know who's great? that I forgot to mention, Jackie Earl Haley as Dukes. Oh, um, yeah. And this is, I looked it up afterwards. So Jackie Earl Haley is the guy who's played like Rorschach and he's like 
Andrew Nemus or whatever in uh, or, or George George something George Noyce in uh, Shutter Island. That's Noyce, his name. Noyce. Yeah, uh, Noyce. Um, he's amazing, and this is two years after he was nominated for an Oscar. He plays like the most ridiculous hippie Stoner in this movie, guy. and he's great. So, what did you give Semi Pro? I gave it a five. I honestly I gave like, it a four. Yeah, that's fine. I just think it's average. Yeah, average for a comedy. And All right, I we'll give, talk about Major League. I then. give Major League the same thing. Yeah, like I said, I don't think either movie is a standout. I give Major League a four. Um, I think everyone except Serrano is good, and I think Serrano is mostly probably racist. Yeah. Um, but kind of funny. Yeah, it's like a ra- racist but I caricature sort of, feel of a bad. Cuban, I guess. But I don't know if Cuban's like. I don't think if I don't think anyone does what. Sir, it's almost like so exaggerated. Like so, so Pedro Serrano is the right fielder for the Cleveland Indians. He's he the that's from, all state stands. Yeah, he's yeah. that actor, whatever yeah, that guy's name is. I can't do is. that because his voice is so deep. It's all state. Uh, and he is he. Are you in good it, hands? He, <laughs> he is a he's a practitioner of law. No nope. oh, baseball. Voodoo. Okay. Um he practices like voodoo rituals in his in his locker. locker? Yeah. And I feel like it it's gotta be so exciting. Where does he get all the snakes? I don't know. From yeah. the snake store. See, but that's slapstick <laughs> humor, like bringing in it's like It's so exaggerated yeah. that it's funny but i think it probably also is racist but also he's not very good at the accent but he doesn't oh, have too man, many his lines spanish accent's pretty bad and then also the guy that plays roger dorn the Double. third baseman that can't play defense is not the best he's got a perfect face for the role i don't know i got he, he looks like a ball player i give it a five i think that bear tom berenger is not that great of an actor i no. ever throughout the movie i kept saying like i could only think of him as the like right hand man to the dad in inception he's like the one who gets kidnapped that uh tom hardy like forges the identity of um i will say wesley snipes is amazing in every scene like i honestly think he's he's an incredibly gifted actor he is um he could just do like super yeah. goofy humor, super confident humor, and then he could be as cool as he is in Blade. And then he's really serious in certain movies. I don't know. Everything that he says as Willie Mays Hayes is really fun, and everything that he does like um, with his body in the batter's box is really funny. I love James Gammon as Lou Brown. Like it's an iconic role, and it reminded us both of uh, Bruce Bochy, wh- who we both love. Uh, for differing reasons. Yeah, but, he coached our favorite teams. He was yeah. a Padres manager for a long time. And he's a legend. I just love like Giants how deep his longer. voice is. And it, he just like, he doesn't give a shit. And it's such a good, like, it's such a good performance in that role. Um, I really do miss when Charlie Sheen was just awesome and would just show up in movies and be like funny, but like also pretty cool. But Rick Vaughn is a, is an iconic sports movie guy yeah yeah so he's playing like kind of a standard role but he does it really well and oh, i yeah. love that about charlie sheen like he did this and ferris bueller around the same time yeah. you want me to take like, him outside he's so <laughs> <laughs> dude he's so cool and he has the most ridiculous uh haircut um yeah that's basically it i really like uh the like old drunk southern pitcher who's basically like a cheap walmart version of billy bob thornton harris? chelsea ross yeah harris yeah he was good the like starting pitcher i guess and a 47 then 47 year old and then pitcher. as we mentioned earlier bob uh euclid is like euchre bob euchre i thought there was an l is no it dude bob oh, okay. euchre he well, harry been, doyle is like one of my favorite he's characters a former from former catcher for the brewers and the braves and a couple other teams and he's been the brewers and he still is. I think he still Brewers. is the yeah. Brewers commentator since like I think 1971. He's the voice on EA Sports like MLB games. He might be, dude. The yeah. guy is a legend. He's All right, like well, Bob Euchre fucking kills it, and he's having he's fun. So funny. He's having so much fun with his own like just a uh, bit job. outside. Yeah. Um, is our next category quotability? Wait, do we do? Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's do. No, let's do legacy. Okay, we'll do legacy first. So legacy okay, is, fine, uh, fine, especially fine, when we're fine, talking fine. about comedies, we're talking about like how well did this movie age? Does it make you cringe with some of it? Did you like rewatching it? And then where does it stand in terms of the history of like comedies and stuff? So let's start with Major League since we're on it. I'm giving Ma- it a five. Okay. 
Major League is amongst the best sports movies, and so it's slightly is, above average. Interesting. Yeah, for legacy. Mm, okay. I there are not too many more iconic baseball movies out there. Yeah. No, I agree. Five is only slightly above average. Explain. I just don't think it's the best of those baseball movies because I think that that's Moneyball. Hmm. But out of like comedy versions of it, it's definitely the best, right? Hmm. Because Moneyball is, I like Moneyball. But Money then Ball. you've got I, things like Bad News Bears and Sandlot. Like Sandlot's dude, probably I, your. I think seven. I like Major League more than Sandlot. Like Sandlot's I do too. awesome. But I do like, too. Yeah, no, I get it. I was just wondering. But do do you think anything like age poorly? Besides um, the Cuban stuff. No, Serrano ages fairly poorly. Um, pretty much everything that Jake Taylor does, where he's ultra oh, creepy, dude, creepy, and then ex. it starts out with him and like. I guess Mexico and he's wearing a sombrero and there's like tequila on the stand and it's like, and I was like, why don't do this? Dude, Cause in this he's movie. getting it, but in Mexico. And then like two yeah, months later, he's racist. like, I've totally changed ex ex girl. He's like, I've yeah. changed. It's like, dude, two months ago you were naked in a bed with at least one. There were two women. There were two girls. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. And, and like a bunch of so tequila. So at least one is correct. It's two months and you've yeah. changed. Like Jake Taylor's a dirt bag. Yeah. And not a Long Beach State dirt bag. Like oh, an actual whoa. dirt bag. Good team. It's good the name team. of their baseball team. Not as good as Beavs. Fun, fun stadium they've got uh, there. This uh, movie was made with $11 million, which is kind of awesome. Um, yeah. And especially with how many. But they, you know, none of those guys were huge at the time. Um, Tom Berenger was about to be. And so was Charlie Sheen, obviously. Uh, but it made $49 million, so it was definitely a successful movie. Yeah. Um, I think the wild thing moment at the end is super iconic. It's something that people always think about yeah. like when they're thinking about like baseball movies. Everyone knows what Major League is. It's still like one of those movies that we all, like, especially as guys, I like, wonder we grew if up watching. Closers had iconic walk-in songs. Because of that? Before that. Maybe it maybe it like trended best it. walk in songs of all time are Enter Sandman, Mariano Rivera's, Ooh, Hell's I'm, Bells, save that Trevor Hoffman's, and Wild Thing, Rick Vaughn, who's yeah. not even a real pitcher. I'm gonna ask you at the end when we get in the accolade section what your walk up pitch is. So think about it now. Oh, but uh I already got it. Okay, same with me. Um most people just know this movie and love it. Uh it's not for everyone. I don't think it's like exciting for any woman who it doesn't care about baseball or I don't man think the who movie, doesn't care about baseball right and i i just but i also just like i i don't really think this movie is like geared towards both genders at all no that's why i gave it a five yeah but I, i'm still giving it a six because it's super iconic like i think it's you yeah, know i don't think it well appeals to too many people that don't watch baseball that's fair whereas that's fair. like Moneyball and sandlot like those do what do you think the legacy is of Semi Pro? I give it a one. Wow, that's fucking brutal. I don't think it's got anything, dude. It's got, it's like bottom tier Will Ferrell movies, bottom tier basketball movies, bottom tier sports movies, bottom tier comedies. What does it have? I Andre 3000 is in it. So, like, and I'll talk about this. Like, a how many movies bit. has he been in? Is that its legacy? E What's his legacy? It? Yeah, what has Andre three thousand done? Just why this is he movie? in Semi Pro yeah. and not in anything? I don't. I just like no. He's in a lot. He's actually in a show right now on AMC called Dispatchers from uh, Elsewhere. Really? Yeah, with Jason Siegel. No, he's actually wow. he played Jimi Hendrix in a biopic that people actually really liked, but it wasn't like big in theaters. Wow, um, he looks a lot like Jimmy. I don't know. Okay, okay. I gave it a two. Like you know, I I don't think it's like the worst in terms of its legacy because I think each time I watch it, it gets better and better. And I do think like, I know a lot of people that have seen it and like, like it, they'll just, you know, it'll be one of those things like right now it's on Netflix. And I think it's one of those things that people are like, Oh, semi pro, you know, it's not great, but it's a rainy day. I'm going to go watch this. I think that that's where you have it. I don't know. All right. I, fair. I, I hated it when it first came out. I think only a few things aged poorly. I don't think a lot aged poorly. He does drop the R-bomb like in the first 
Oh, uh, like, just like our guest, like Alex in, Moley. Like in the worst way, too. Yeah, Multiple it's pretty times. bad at the beginning. Um, but I do think it gets funnier each time I watch it. It's not even casual. It's like thought out. It's methodical the way he drops the R-bomb. Yeah, I don't know. It got – so it wasn't really well – outside of us, it wasn't really well liked. Like it got like a 47 on Metacritic, 5.8 on IMDb Dude, audience score. It's not good. But the most ridiculous is when we looked at Rotten Tomatoes halfway through and it was like – 22% from critics and 38% from audience. I agree with audience. them, dude. I agree. This director has never done another movie. So I think it like killed his career. Jeez. I didn't um, know that. That's and sad. It, by the way, this was a $55 million budget. We just talked about we just talked about Midsommar, which was $9 million, and it is incredible in terms of its production. And it's and 10 it made, years later. Yeah, and it made money, and it was a smaller movie. This movie was made with a $55 million budget, and it made $44 million. So it lost $11 million. It's, it's wow. like, you know, I think the, the thing, Jeez. the legacy that lived on is the Jackie Moon uh, Halloween costume with the Flint Tropics thing. Yeah. Because, like, our, our previous guest, it's Clay Susick, wore that It's a legitimately great on. jersey. Yeah. It's hilarious. Yeah, Clay dressed up as Jackie Moon a, f- uh, a few years ago, and it that. looked it's absolutely It's a good jersey. Hilarious. Yeah, so that's a two for me, and that's a one from Nick. Um, yeah, let's quickly go through quotability, rewatchability Yeah, for I don't think movies. it's going to be very compli- uh, complicated. Um, we let's think, start. Well, we, the reason why we do this is, like, we think that comedies... Yeah, should, should be quotable and should be quo- quotable and we should be able to rewatch it. It yeah. should be something that like a group of friends would want to rewatch. Okay, so, so what did you give Semi Pro? Semi Pro I gave a four. I, I, I said it was kind of average. I do like I I think a lot of that is rewatching. Um I said for a really long time the Will Arnett line where he's like, Did you just call me Jive Turkey? And that whole scene, like <laughs> I I've said that a lot. And, like, Aaron and I, I know, have talked about, like, the jive turkey scene. Yeah. Um, it, the every, everybody panic! And the, like, everybody, um, where, where he's, like, talking about Put the, away your sodas. Do we like sweet things? Yeah. Uh, what's the thing that he says about the Titanic? Oh, I don't know, but I love the fourth place. Fourth place. Yeah, yeah. Fourth place. Oh, it's just like the Titanic, but it's full of bears. It's like a funny <laughs> line. That's what it is. Uh, everybody love everybody. Um, the uh, Vicacus uh, or what, Vita- whatever that guy's you name is. You goddamn son of a bitch. Yeah, when he's like, <laughs> yes, right on. Yes, right on. I don't know. I, I just, used to quote that. I, I gave it a three. Yeah. Um, I just don't th- want to rewatch it. Suck again. my cock! I'll murder your whole family. I don't. What? I, what did I say? <laughs> what did I say? I just don't want to rewatch it again. Um, uh, there are some lines I like. The fourth place, fourth place, fourth place thing is, I think, kind of funny. And uh, I, I wish, I just, I wish you were still a washing machine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it'll be me and Dewey the Bear fighting. Dewey has killed people in public before. I don't know. I think that like my point is like on a rainy day, this is definitely something that people will watch. And I think that it's rewatchable in that way. And it's kind of average in that. All right. And I like, I watched it with my buddies in San Francisco one day when we had nothing better to do. What so about, I think it what about that. major league? Uh, major league. Let's see. Quotability rewatch. I gave it a four as well. I don't think okay. it's very quotable. No, I don't think it's very quotable either, but there is one quote that is quoted in almost yeah, every single baseball broadcast ever. Mm-hmm. Uh, just a bit outside is in everything. And that came from this movie, as far as I know. So it's got to be blown up. So that's a huge Yo, quote. Play like Maze, run like Hayes. I used to say that all the time when I was a kid, I feel. Yeah. Or it maybe just, I didn't, and I want to wish that. Are I you said that. wait? Are you saying Jesus can't hit a curveball? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I just think that like having one quote that's quoted like pretty much daily between the months of like February and November by somebody. Yeah, it's got to be is pretty incredible. Um, and I love well, this guy threw at his own kid in a father son. <laughs> <laughs> I love. Her. That's the best color yeah. com- commentary. I love uh, rewatching this movie, especially in this very strange time where there is no sports or yeah. toilet paper, and we we 
get to live vicariously through this movie. Yeah, I genuinely enjoy it each time. And actually, we didn't do eye candy, but I was noticing like how good the editing was yeah. for a comedy. And I think that it's you're not really like mad about rewatching it each time. It, it's always like a good idea to do it, and you will get through the whole movie. So I think it is a endlessly yeah. rewatchable movie. What'd you give it a five? I gave it a five, which brings my com- my total for Major League to twenty four. Okay, and, and uh, my total for um, Semi Pro is a paltry thirteen. Yeah, so I gave. Semi pro a 16 out of 35, and I gave Major League a 25 out of 35, which is honestly good. But yeah, man, semi pro, yeah, not so the that's best. a 49. But let's get into our that's 49 to 29. Oh, damn, 49 out of 70, 70, 70, yeah, 49 out of 70, 70, yep, math, uh, yeah, and uh, and 29 out of 70. Oh my god, 29 out of 70, good for you. Semi Pro -pro. is just not good. I'm sorry, yeah, okay. Well, let's get into our MVP or our uh, accolade section. Let's give out our season ending awards, yeah, and we're gonna treat this like uh, sports awards, and this one might be a little bit fun. So, let's kick it off with MVP, Nick. My MVP is Monix, Mm. turns the whole team around. That's Woody Harrelson's point guard. Uh, character, veteran point guard, uh, world, uh, not World Series, uh, NBA championship winning point yeah. guard, uh, Monix. He p- turns the whole team around. He's a coach and the starting point guard. Yeah. And my... his flow is legitimate. Yeah, his flow is fucking sick. Too. Uh, yeah, I, I, my MVP, I was thinking about Woody Harrelson as Monix. Uh, Jackie Moon is kind of an MVP because he promotes the team. He keeps them alive that whole time. You know, he's aided by Monix. That's fascinating. But he keeps it alive. But I was also thinking about, I think, Dennis Hoisbert's career uh, after Major League as being the All-State guy. He's got to be the MVP. Whoa, you pick Serrano? That guy he is does still crush. exists in all state commercials, and that guy is probably making so much bank, and he has the coolest voice in the world. And so he learns how he knows MVP. how to hit a curveball now. Who's your least valuable player? Uh, it's Jackie Moon. Ooh, interesting. I don't okay. see him do speak on it. Jack. Okay. In this movie, besides like some hook shots and L-U? throwing the pass to coffee black for that like for inventing the alley-oop yeah but what about his promotional skills dude i just don't believe him as a power forward okay i don't think his skills are there well he's got my lvp are the yankees and it was yeah. really awesome oh, to see them lose their division oh i take it back my lvp is the yankees yeah that's right simran and aaron and christian and if all you're of listening. our friends yeah uh, and then my lvp is also people who think that semi-pro is a top uh will ferrell movie could have been aaron you could have not been Aaron. losers yeah uh, who's your cy young and our cy young is the guy who threw the hardest or yeah he's throwing the, the most heat dude Who's the He's just hottest. going the hardest. Yeah, so I think that the person that's firing on all uh, cylinders is Euchre. As, oh, good As Harry one. Doyle. Good I mean, one. he's incredible. Like, every single oh, scene in him good. commentating. But I also put uh, Andrew Daly as Dick Pepperfield is, like... That's good. Both of them are just, like, they keep those movies alive, and they are also just... Like, mm. actually, I, I, I'm going to, no, no, no. I'm just going to stick with Euchre because I think he's doing the most because he is he's not even an actor. Right. Exactly. He's not an actor. He's making fun of himself and he's being absurd. Like he's an alcoholic. Yeah. He's like pouring food. Jack Daniels in his, oh dude. He could have ruined his whole career with that. He t- definitely didn't. He's been no, I know. broadcasting. I could have. Dude, it's, dude. Oh Who man. Who was your Cy Young That's really that. good. I went very literal, but also I think he does give an oh, excellent performance thing. as yeah. Rick Vaughn. Yeah. Dude, uh, because he is the Oh, I wasn't most, talking about... Li- yeah, yeah. But but this is the thing, is he's the most iconic character from either of these movies, I think by a long shot. Right. I almost want to give like an overacting award to like the woman who owns the Indians. I don't even want to talk about her. Yeah. Who's your comeback says. player of the year? The guy who... Oh, what did we want to see? Do comeback, comeback player of the player? year is the one who is doing the most in the least amount of time. 
And mine so, is like, Rob Cordry. And just like defied expectations. I put Rob Cordry as Kyle as well. Awesome. Um, I also think I, I will say um, the guy who plays Lou Brown is kind of doing that. I think he's got like the least to work with. And I don't think he was supposed to be a funny character. And to me, he's funny in the way that he acts. There's something about like old people that don't give a shit about the people around them that makes me laugh. Yeah. So it's kind of like a tie for both of them. But yeah, Rob Corddry is like in two or three scenes and is absolutely he hysterical. He just cracks me up the whole time um, that he's in it. Do you want to do a defensive player of the year? Yeah, defensive player of the year we were talking about being the most consistent. Yeah, it's like most consistent putting the team on their back. Like every scene, they're great, and they kind of just bring up the movie. And mine is Bob Euchre. Okay. I put uh, Wesley Snipes in Ma- uh, Major League Fair as Willie Mays Hayes or Will Arnett as, um, uh, what's his name, Redwood or something. Yeah. Like I think he's really funny. I think it's funny. Dick Redwood. Yeah, it's like some of the scenes that I don't think are that great – end up being so much better with his like post-traumatic stress, like Vietnam war veteran (laughs) uh, character. I just think Euchre is the most consistently funny person in either of these movies. Okay. I got a question. I think by a long shot in terms of sports commentary, who do you like the most? Do you like cotton and pepper from dodgeball? So Jason Bateman and Gary Cole, who are just like the most quoted, um, but maybe not the funniest. Jason Bateman? Redwood and Dick. Will Arnett, you mean? No, no, no. In Dodgeball, it's oh, Jason in Bateman Dodgeball. Okay, and Gary okay, Cole. Okay. Where he's like, Cotton! And he's yeah. like, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, it's going to be hard to see, Cotton. Or who? Um, and that, or Dick and Redwood, or whatever his name is, Will Arnett and, and Andrew Pearl? Daly. Uh, or? or does Harry Doyle just trump them all? Harry Doyle trumps them all. I, I'm still going to go with uh, Cotton and Pepper. I think they're like the most quotable commentators of all time. Mostly Jason Bateman. He's so ridiculous. Dude, I got to go with the classic. Okay. Euchre kills it. The fact that he's not even an actor and he's just like nailing every comedic line and being this guy that pours Jack Daniels into his... Mic- like, it's like the first his, scene. His Miller no, Lite or like whatever it is. Oh my God. fifth or handle of Jack Daniels. It's so good. Uh, he's great. All right, Nick, Iconic. do you have any recommendations of any like sports comedies, sports movies, or just any movies that you think people should watch? So... Or shows, anything. It's tough because like I feel like a lot of people know most the kind of sports movies that are out there. I definitely really love Moneyball. I very much recommend if you love baseball, read Moneyball. Yeah. Oh my God. Malcolm Lewis or read Moneyball. What's, what's forget his name? the movie? Do, like who's like, the author of Moneyball? Uh, Is it Malcolm? Lewis? I don't know. You can go look at it's the, something Lewis. The, my bookshelf's uh, over there. It's but I I agree. Fantastic. He, that book and Big Short are my favorites. That man. like my big recommendation is read that book. If you love baseball, read that book. It'll yeah. change everything you think about baseball. For sure. I think um, it, on Netflix right now, I think especially with everything being shut down, I think you should watch High Flying Bird. It's about mm. the NBA, uh, when the NBA shut down or the shutout or whatever. Yeah. Um, it's really cool. cool. It's about how a sports agent kind of manipulates the way to bring back the NBA. Very cool. And it's really intense. Everybody Wants Some is an awesome college baseball movie. Uh, it's not very realistic in terms of the sports, but if you like Days and Confused, it's by the same director and it's considered like the spiritual follow-up. Sweet. And I've watched it at least 30 times and it just came out like three years ago because um, I'm a crazy person. Friday Night Lights, the movie with Billy Bob Thornton is great. Yep. You can watch the show. It's good too. And then if you want a documentary about basketball, Gunning for that number one spot is really, really cool. It's about the high school class of basketball players um, with like Kevin Love, Michael Beasley, um, a bunch of people that you would recognize, uh, just like absolutely killing it in high school in this crazy tournament. Do you still uh, uh, subscribe to the Athletic? Yeah, the Athletic. Yeah, is awesome. I very much recommend the Athletic. Best oh, right now would be a good time to catch up. Best writers time. out there. Um, if you want a link, a referral. We can send you those because we got it, baby. Yeah, well, uh, me and my buddies uh, read it because they like Tottenham Hotspurs too. Yeah. All right, this week we still have an episode coming out of Memento versus Born Identity. So go and watch those movies before we do that. We have a uh, special guest Andrew Berg that's going to be on that. Um, you can follow us on social media. Hey, you listening right now? 
Are you are you at home and you're on your Instagram and you're not checking out Facing Off Podcast? How many sweatpants have you worn today? Go to Facing Off Podcast. So if you go on Instagram, it's Instagram.com slash Facing Off Pod. And if you go to Twitter, it's Twitter.com slash Facing Off Pod. Just look up Facing Off Podcast and you'll find us. If you want to send us an email, you're worried about the world, or you just want to talk about some movies right now because you're going to be at home for a while. Facing off podcast at gmail.com. I would love to read your email on our next episode. Uh, Nick, do you got a send off? You go first. Oh, I did get shot. I am Nick. That is Gabe. And there will be another night. 